This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God Read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue unlearning the world with the beginning of chapter 3 part 1 of ordering of thought David to see a world to even perceive anything means there is an authority problem going on ultimately that is the basics of why the mind judges the mind orders the illusions and makes hierarchies of illusions because it wants be to be the author of itself there is a very deep rooted belief that reality can be selected from that is what all the judgments in this world seem to be i choose to go here or there i prefer this and i choose to avoid that the assumption underneath all of that is that i can choose reality reality is not something that i can accept but rather something that i can select from there are parts of it that i want and parts of it that i can actually reject that denies the wholeness judging makes the split seem real that is what maintains it when we move away from the ordering of thoughts we can think of ourselves more as a mind we start to see the fallacy of all these things that we thought we were as a person i did this i did not do that i am hoping to do this in the future it takes it out of the personal context into the awareness that i am a mind and i have all these concepts and ideas that are just images thoughts are just images that i have made the thoughts themselves are not the problem it is the ordering and the arrangement of those images that keeps me from seeing that they are all equally illusory it is not that a cup in and of itself is good or bad the arranging of the images is where the problem is such as believing that a car is more valuable than a cup or that this body is more valuable than that body friend it is the decision david the decision to judge presumes that reality is mine to choose from to select from if i continue to judge i must therefore believe that reality is mine to choose friend what about valuing anything i thought that the whole idea was to recognize that there was no value in anything that is not eternal david yes but you cannot do that without allowing the holy spirit to reorder the mind and to do that you must give up your own thoughts and images as long as you talk about having no value in the world and you still hold on to judgment and ordering of images 
then you are giving it value by that. Friend, you are saying that what we want to do is value everything equally? David, yes. The only way that the ordering can be given up is to give one meaning to everything, every image. You do not just try to say that. Nothing I see means anything because there has to be a purpose, the Holy Spirit's purpose, to unify the perception. The Holy Spirit gives equal meaning to a lamp, a body, a car, a trailer. Everything has one purpose. In the Holy Spirit's eyes, so to speak, the idea of these things having any meaning in and of themselves is meaningless. There is no such thing as a microphone defined as the deceived mind perceives it. Because that always has to do with someone speaking into it. It involves voices and bodies. You see how there are a bunch of concepts. It is the same with a couch. A couch is where bodies sit down. Bodies are just images too. They are images just like the couch. Friend, sitting on another image. David, even the sitting on is another image because there is a relationship there. The Holy Spirit knows that there is no relationship between the images and the only meaning that any of the images have is the meaning that the Holy Spirit gives to the images. In that sense, the miracle sees that they are all false. That is why true forgiveness is just seeing that the false is false. Seeing that there is no cause in the images. They are just a bunch of images. This brings us up into the metaphysical realm of knowing that I am a mind with all these disordered thoughts. I want to learn to perceive correctly. I want to learn to allow my mind to be reordered by the Holy Spirit. This is to say that the same meaning will be given to everything. Only what God creates is irreversible and unchangeable. What you made can always be changed because when you do not think like God, you are not really thinking at all. Delusional ideas are not real thoughts although you can believe in them. But you are wrong. The function of thought comes from God and is in God. As part of His thought, you cannot think apart from Him. Irrational thought is disordered thought. God himself orders your thought because your thought was created by him. Guilt feelings are always a sign that you do not know this. They also show that you believe you can think apart from God and want to. Every disordered thought is attended by guilt at its inception 
and maintained by guilt in its continuance. Guilt is inescapable by those who believe. They order their own thoughts and must therefore obey their dictates. Text chapter 5, section 5 The guilt comes in once thoughts are believed to be real. Once the mind identifies with the body. I did hit so and so. I did yell at them. And I feel guilty for doing that. It has taken the body thoughts of person A and person B and it believes that a real attack took place. If all those thoughts were just seen to be illusory thoughts, not part of my right mind, the part that thinks with God, where would the guilt be? Literally, there could be no guilt. It is the association of the mind with those thoughts that brings the guilt. As soon as we identify with those thoughts, we also look back on a personal history that is filled with a closet full of things that we wish we had done and things we wish we had not done. The moment of release is simply seeing, as a mind, that those thoughts are not real They never have been real and they never will be. Nor are my fear thoughts about being provided for in the future. All the thoughts of the future are just as equally past tense. To believe in linear time is to take thoughts from the past and project them in another direction and call it the future. They are projected and given another name, future, when really they are both past. It is the future past. The fear comes in when I am identified as one of those thoughts which is a body and I believe in all the conditions of the world such as economics and weather. The fear comes when I believe those thoughts are real instead of just seeing the unreality of them. When you start to see some of these things you are really coming to a release. Coming to see that my mind holds only what I think with God. Workbook Review 4 Introduction And I am as God created me. Workbook Lesson 110 Friend It is only the mind's identification with the unreal thoughts that makes them seem real? David, right, and it believes it can order them. We are back to that ordering thing. Before believing in them, it is the ordering of them that makes them seem real. That is why we have to give up the judgment or ordering. Friend, to recognize that they are not real, that they are not me? David, yes, that is why it is important to notice even the tiny things, even the minor little preferences. 
until you get the metaphysics down, you cannot see how it makes any difference. What we are doing is getting down to the basic point that all ordering of thought maintains the split. The mind has to be identified with form and thoughts and believe they are real before it can feel guilty. There is a choice to identify with the wrong mind and then it gets played out into various scenarios. But really, it is all just symbolic. The world is nothing but symbols. Friend, so level confusion then is trying to put wrong-minded things into the right mind? David, we really have to go deep into this to get clear on level confusion. It is not bringing the wrong mind into the right mind because the right mind is the miracle, the atonement. When there is any causality given to the world of form and as long as there is any ordering of thoughts, the mind cannot be in the right mind. As long as there are hierarchies, even just a slight preference, you cannot be in the right mind. You cannot be in the right mind and have a slight preference for anything. Friend, what is the relationship between having a preference and not being able to see that form is not causative? David, Having a preference has to do with the hierarchy of illusions. It is impossible to think of that preference without a hierarchy. That is what it means to have a preference, to have some higher priorities and some lower priorities. Hierarchy is impossible without a split. The mind does not want to see that the split is in the mind, so it projects images out onto the screen and is in chaos and panic, having projected the images. It then tries to order the images to bring some sort of security and control into a very wild and chaotic kind of situation. We will continue with the second and final part of episode 1 of chapter 3 in tomorrow's episode.